What's going on, everybody? It is your man, Cleveland Terry, and today we're going to talk a little bit about my horrible, horrible experience on my travel gig this weekend. Actually, today, the last 36 hours. I want to talk about it while it's fresh in my head. I haven't done a lot of gig logs. So this is going to be kind of a, um, I don't know, kind of a talk through just to kind of vent out some of my frustrations and just share my experiences with some people that maybe don't travel or maybe don't understand, you know, what you can and can't do, what it takes. We're going to talk about it here. All right, everybody. Once again, if you're new here, this is what we do. We talk about all things DJ related, gig logs, tips and tutorials, and hardware reviews. If that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click on that bell notification so you know the next time I post my next video. And there's going to be a lot of videos over the next two months. I got a lot of things going on and I'm really excited to be able to share those things with you. But today we're going to talk about this weekend. Now, a couple of months ago, uh, a former client reached out to us and asked us if we would DJ her son's grad party. Now, the party was on Saturday, which isn't necessarily a big deal, except for the fact that for people that do bar and bat mitzvahs, uh, parties in May are absolutely insane. People try to get their events in prior to the school ending because after that, it's anybody's guess who comes and who doesn't come to your event. So that's typically when we do the most work. This last Saturday, we had 10 bar mitzvahs. That's a lot. It's, it takes a lot of work. They were large scale parties, lots of things, up lights and cold sparklers and video projection, a little bit of everything. And you start to add that into every party and it adds up. So I like to be around for those types of things. So this particular client, well, they've been around for the past 15 years. Like I said, we've done four of their bar and bat mitzvahs and they've always been super high scale. The client lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. She always has us come out, pays for our travel, everything we need to have a great party. And they are always great parties. So I decided, well, you know what? I'm doing a lot of traveling. Next week I have to be in San Jose. The following week I gotta be somewhere else. I said, you know what? I don't wanna have to drive. Normally we drive to Arizona because we have a lot of gear. This time it was just me. So instead of driving, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna fly. I was gonna fly in on Friday night and then do the party on Saturday. Maybe pick up a gig while I'm out there. That was the plan anyway. I called a friend of mine. He's also a DJ in Arizona, does a lot of bar and bat mitzvahs. And I said, hey, do you have any equipment that you can let me borrow? And he says, well, I." can get you all this stuff. I can't get you a controller because we're using them all. We're completely swamped, but I can come over and set it up and then you can just come into the party. Great. That's exactly what I wanted. Easy enough. Fast forward a couple of weeks and it turns out that I have to do a wedding on that Friday. I wasn't supposed to do that wedding, but the DJ that was supposed to be on the wedding through some miscommunications wasn't available, which means that I had to do this wedding. Probably didn't need to be there for this wedding, but you know, that's what, that's what you do as a business. So I ended up having to book a flight for Saturday morning. Now, again, this is Scottsdale. I'm flying from LA to Scottsdale. That is an hour and like five minute flight, not a big deal. And so what we did was we booked my flight for the crack of dawn. It was like 930 was the flight time while I'm driving. I get emails from uh, American Airlines telling me, hey, your flight has been delayed. It's been pushed from 9.38 to, uh, I think it was like 11 o'clock, 11.40, I believe. Okay, not the end of the world. It sucks because I'm already driving there. I'm not gonna turn around and drive home. Get to the airport, everything's fine. As I'm walking through security, I just pass security, I get another notification. Your flight is now scheduled to go at one o'clock. Okay, fine. It is what it is. Uh, we will wait it out. The terminal I was in didn't really have any food places. They had like a Dunkin' Donuts, but they had no other real food places. So you're kind of stuck there eating like convenience store food, but it is what it is. Now, uh, one o'clock rolls around, one ten rolls around, all of a sudden the guy gets on and says, hey, by the way, it's being pushed to 140. Now I'm getting a little concerned, right? 
get a little concerned because again, it's only an hour away and then I'm 20 minutes from the actual party. So as long as I get there, I had a 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. party, but I'm still thinking ahead. So I emailed the client saying, hey, just letting you know, my flight's been delayed. I hope to be there as soon as possible, but I'm still waiting on my flight. So I post on IG, hey, any DJs in Scottsdale or Phoenix, let me know. I need somebody to cover me, hopefully for only like an hour or two, but maybe the entire night if they end up canceling this flight. I then text my guy and my guy said he was totally swamped. And I said, are you sure you don't have anybody? And he's like, I don't have anybody. Sorry, I'll look around and see what happens. Meanwhile, people are DMing me. Hey, I might have this guy, I might have this guy, but there's no like concrete people yet. So 140 rolls around, nothing. Okay, they delay it again. Now it's three o'clock. And then they get on. They let us know that, well, the plane that you were supposed to be flying on had some maintenance issues in the morning. So they've been working on this plane, trying to get it up, but to no avail. So what they're going to do is they're gonna fly a plane out from Phoenix that was scheduled to land there. They're just gonna turn that plane around and then come back to LAX and then you're gonna get on that flight. Great, okay, should be here at four o'clock. Okay, cool, four, five, and they're at 5.30, no problem. I'm watching the timer roll down like, oh, it's, you know, 20 minutes until you're boarding. It's 10 minutes until you're boarding. Put the board in nine minutes and there's no plane out there yet. One minute into your boarding, what the hell is going on? It just changed, just now. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Well, it's been changing. <laughs> all day, right? All day. <laughs> now it's delayed. It says 4.30. What the hell is going on here? I thought, I thought we were fine. Guy gets on again. However, we did have to acquire new aircraft at the aircraft hangar here in Los Angeles. However, before they were able to tow it into the gate, they did happen to find a maintenance issue. That aircraft won't be due in to the back of the service and declare yeah, that service until 4 no, approximately, which is why we posted a 4.30 departure for your flight to Phoenix. I do understand it's very frustrating. You have been waiting all morning for this new aircraft, and I do apologize that we disappointed you with an aircraft that was just found with a new maintenance issue. And everybody's like, didn't you just tell us it was flying in from Phoenix? So now they're just flat out lying, right? Just lying to just try to hold us at bay. So I'm concerned. It's turning into a bad thing. Now, mind you, I have never missed an event ever, ever out of the you know 30 years I've been doing this. Never missed an event. Uh, I've only been late to one event and that wasn't even our fault. I was working for a totally different company and they gave us the wrong location for the party. So nothing on my end has ever been, I've never been late to an event. So I'm panicking and waiting around. And um, finally I get a call from the guy who set up the equipment. He goes, hey, I have somebody that can come set it up for you, do it until you get there and then take off as soon as you're, I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I'm still waiting on this plane, but I hope to be there soon. So. The plane rolls around at like 4.45. There's someone in the back. I gotta put this in the back. Um, you can put it in a bin if yeah. you want. This one, I can put it We're in a bin? Yeah? So yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, thank you. The flight's about an hour, hour and 20 minutes, give or take. I got a guy that's gonna meet me there. He's gonna be doing the first hour. Uh, I'm gonna Uber over to the place and uh, hopefully not be too mentally exhausted to ride it. We'll see. Oh, uh, it's gonna be a little, a little longer. It's, it's in the hangar here. They're just working on some things. Like, wait a minute, you just told us I was flying in. So, because they lied to you, exactly. Yep, yep. So, I, I think that's exactly what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got a pilot shortage. Really? Yeah. Somebody go give me some of that funny taste of lunch. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yep, it's got to be that one. <laughs> there you go, my brother. Uh, thank you very much. You are so welcome, man. You kick some butt out there, right? Thank you. I'm definitely going to try. All right. Okay.
All right. Hey there. What's up, bro? I'm the DJ. You're all good, man. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look who's here. Hey, Look I'm who's here. here. Look who's here. Where's Alana? Hey there. I'm here. It's Harry. How you doing, buddy? Good, brother. How you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. So, uh, a couple of things that I will say. Uh, first off, I'm sure you guys are asking me, I'm sure you're thinking, what controller did you bring? You know, what did you bring on your flight? And this is actually a, a very, very important thing because I think a lot of people don't know what they can and can't bring. Now, everybody knows that if you put your hardware in a, a flight case, a roller, whatever, a slider, you can just check that. They'll throw it under the plane. Then you can pick it up when you're done. It'll just you know be waiting for you. That's one way. But in all honesty, I just didn't want to have to deal with trying to roll through a heavy ass piece of equipment. I just wasn't in. I wasn't in the mood. So I opted to bring on my uh, soft case and uh, the controller that I am most comfortable with. Not so much most comfortable with, but I think is the best controller for travel. Uh, is the DDJ-1000. Why? Because it is a full service controller, has everything you need, has the dual microphones, you know, has great jog wheels and it's a great sounding board, but it's super light because the whole thing is, you know, made out of plastic. So in a soft case and that, I mean, I can carry that thing around left and right. And because of the footprint, it's only like, you know, this big. Now, the reason that I'm saying that it's only like, like this big and only like, you know, this, this uh, deep is because you have a couple of options. So depending on the airline that you take, some airlines have more options than others. When you go in with your soft case, you have to treat it like it's a guitar case. It's something that requires a little bit more care, but it's not something you can just throw into the luggage with all those hard pieces because it's going to break. So I can bring it on with me on the flight. now. As I just said, some of them have little closets like right in the way, way back. So you tell them, oh, I'm bringing this on. They look at you crazy for a minute and you tell them it's like a guitar, it's a DJ controller, but it doesn't have any protection. I need to keep it with me. And then they'll tell you, okay, uh, there's always places for you. This particular plane I was getting on didn't have it, but it wasn't a full flight. So they just said, oh, just put it in the overhead storage. And that's what I did, fit just perfectly. We were good to go. Um, on the way back, it was a full flight, but it still fit in an overhead storage box. So very, very important, the size of your controller. Like I wouldn't bring anything bigger than a 1000. And the reason that I didn't want to do like the Rev 7 or even the Rain 1 is because they're both heavier and I didn't want to have to deal with the weight carrying that all the way around. So like I said, a full plastic controller is just a better option and loved it. It was so easy to get through. And then when I got to the party and plugged it in, it had been a while since I'd used my 1000. It's still a really, really great deck, like a really great deck, even with the effects strip that I'm not a big fan of. But besides that, it just performs perfectly pretty much every time. So I was really, really happy about that. So for those of you that are wondering if you can travel with your DJ equipment, you absolutely can. Don't worry about it, don't stress, just don't bring anything super large because the bigger the gear, the more you're gonna get pushback from the airline. So if you can keep it small and compact, and I didn't have a, another piece of luggage, that's kind of key also. Since I only had my backpack and that, it can count as kind of a piece of luggage. Now, if you had another piece of luggage and your DJ stuff, you know, and your bag, you're probably gonna get a little more pushback. And if that's the case, like you have more bags, I would put it in a hard case and then just check it. That's just my opinion. You do what you wanna do, but I wouldn't try to mess around with that. But literally one of the ladies was like, oh, you don't have another bag though, do you? I said, no. And they said, okay, go ahead. So they're willing to work with you. On the way home, a little harder to find spots, to be honest with you, but I finally did. And look, at a certain point, look, they don't have a choice. They, they got to put it in. They're not going to leave it there. But 
weeks. I don't want to make it seem like I wasn't prepared. Yes, in a perfect world, you'd go on Friday and you'd make sure you had time for this type of stuff on Saturday. But in my mind, uh, and I've flown many, many times, I've never had this issue ever happen to me. So in my mind, me getting a flight at 9.30 meant I was going to be sitting around waiting for, you know, a good eight hours somewhere in Arizona. I'd probably check into my hotel and then Uber to the party after that. That's what was going on in my mind. Like, oh my God, I'd be sitting around forever doing nothing. But it is what it is. The most important part was I got it covered because that's key here. I mean, there's nothing worse than you arriving late and there's nothing. You're just sitting there. So I did get it covered and, um, and the party went off without a hitch. I got there. The client was so happy to see me. And that's all I can really say about that. Like I said, the party was great, but it added a lot of stress to an otherwise pretty easy day. And top it off with the fact that I got 10 other parties that are all texting me, trying to figure out, hey, this isn't working. Hey, this isn't working. What's going on with this? I need help with this. And I'm sitting in an airport just praying that my flight's going to leave at some time. It was a horrible, horrible experience that way. And now that I understand this, come to find out that a lot of the flights going from LAX to Phoenix uh, is the issue. Uh, from what I understand from every Uber driver that I talk to, uh, the problem is pilots. It's not the planes, it's pilots. They don't have enough. A lot of pilots, a lot of the older pilots have retired. So they have new pilots or they have reached their allotted flying time because there are limits until you just, they won't let you fly because they don't want you causing some sort of an accident. So it's something you just work through. And I know we're not the only ones suffering from, you know, lack of employees. Everybody is suffering with lack of employees. So I am not stressed. So, so I'm not necessarily blaming American airlines, but had they just told me this at nine 30, when they first delayed it, hey guys, uh, we're having some trouble with the plane and it's the only plane that can fly you. So until it gets fixed, you're gonna have to wait here. I honestly would have left the airport, got into my car and then just drove the seven hours to, to Scottsdale. And I still would have been there in time. That's what I would have done had the communication channels been open, but instead they wanted to lie and lie and lie and then make everybody wait because they don't want a big old scene and it's ending up screwing a lot of people. So I'm not really happy about that part because it could have been avoided. This whole thing could have been avoided. Let me know in the comments below some of your nightmare experiences with either flying or traffic, getting to a party on time, you were late. Just put in there your worst experience again. This is all here. This, this whole channel is designed to help people and the communication I think is going to help a lot of people. And, uh, maybe you don't have the same issue that I had now, again, very much out of my control. I can't fly a plane. Um, and they're not communicating with us. So we're kind of getting screwed that way, but you know, let me know in the chat below if, uh, if you've experienced something and how you worked it out anyway. Uh, I'm just happy that I had a guy there for the first hour because, uh, I couldn't imagine walking in there with silence and people just staring at me like, oh, there's the DJ. Like, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that at all, <laughs> especially me. All right, guys, if you found what I said are useful, hit that like button. If you found what I said are really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagrams and the Twitters. Get on my Discord, because that's where we're talking about all things Cleveland Terry. Guys, girls, always a pleasure. I don't talk to you later. We'll talk soon. Peace. And um, I have a couple of meal vouchers for you due to the delay. Okay. That, so can you so can that, use it? them? Meal meal vouchers. Meal vouchers. Yeah. So you can use them at the year. I need this terminal only. But, um, <laughs> I gotta pay people now because I'm going to be late for my event that I've been okay, here for. Okay. So all your all your uh, <laughs> complaints you can address them to customer relations. Isn't that where we I am? We don't do. No, this is customer service. We just do 
rebooking. We don't do refunds for any type of compensation farther than um, okay, mailbox. And, 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 and where's customer relations? Oh, online. I been, people have been United calling and being hung up on, just so you know. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing that. But here we are. The best thing I can get you. If I can get it confirmed, okay. it's maybe Delta. Okay. All right. <laughs>